This video gives a short introduction to using Smedge. After a brief tour of the Smedge interface, we'll explore submitting and controlling jobs. We'll touch briefly on configuring engines and show a few places to look when things go wrong. The Smedge GUI interface uses a series of views to show you information about the jobs you submit, the work that they spawn, and the engines that are doing the work. Each view has one or more lists, which show the details. The list can be sorted by two columns. You can filter the view to eliminate clutter or search for specific jobs in a large list. The list colors can be modified by choosing List Item Colors from the System menu. The Info pane can be shown on the right side of the main window. This pane shows a lot more detail about whatever you have selected in a list. There are different tabs available depending on what you have selected. You can hide and show the info pane using the toolbar, the view menu command, or the keyboard shortcut. The Smedge GUI interface uses modeless floating windows to submit jobs, view history and output, and control engines. This powerful feature allows you to work on multiple things simultaneously. You can edit one job while preparing to submit another, configure multiple groups of engines, and view the history and output from several running jobs all at the same time. Smedge can control a lot of products. Because the product lists can be quite long, it may be useful to hide the products you don't use. In the Smedge GUI options, on the Hide Products tab, you can select the products you don't want to see. Right-click to quickly select All or None. Remember that the products that are checked will be hidden. Hiding products in the GUI does not remove them from your system. It only hides them from the lists on your machine. Other users may still create jobs using products that you have hidden, and these jobs may still render on your machine. Herald allows you to configure actions that are performed in response to events during the job lifecycle. Start Herald using the System menu command or the Toolbar button, or you can even start it without Smedge GUI by double-clicking on the app icon. Create new actions and select which events you want to trigger the action. You can display a message, play a sound, send an email, save the job information to disk, or run an arbitrary command. Smedge uses a simple variable substitution system to get data from the job. The administrator manual describes this system in detail and lists every possible variable you can access for each product. Conspectus gives a graphical overview of the CPU and memory usage of every engine on your network. Start Conspectus using the System menu command or the toolbar button. You can also start it without Smedge GUI by double-clicking the app icon. Engine information is updated in real time, giving you a quick visual summary of your entire farm. The job is the basic unit in Smedge. You submit a job, and Smedge will divide it up and distribute the work to the engines. There are several ways to create jobs, but the most common way is to use the New Job Menu command, or the Toolbar button, to open the Submit Job window. Fill in the details of your job and submit it to add it to the queue. Smedge prioritizes jobs in several ways. First, every Smedge pool has a priority for the engine. Jobs assigned to higher priority pools will have work distributed before jobs in lower priority pools. The highest priority pool is to assign a job directly to an engine, and the lowest priority is given to jobs in the whole system pool. We'll talk more about pools a bit later when discussing engines. Next, every job is assigned a priority value. This value orders which jobs go first in a given pool. Job priority can range from 0 to 100, with 100 being highest. Remember the priority value is checked after the pool, so it is possible to see a priority 40 job from a high priority pool running before a priority 60 job from a low priority pool. Finally, if the pool and priority are the same for several jobs, jobs are normally run in a first in, first out basis. In the Configure Master dialog box, available in Administrator mode, you can change the system to run these jobs round robin so that every job gets some work time. 
Computers these days often have several CPUs, or cores, and lots of available memory. You can use the Processes field to configure how to best utilize multiple cores and memory for a job. Use the One Per Engine setting to have Smedge start a single worker on an engine. That work will try to use all of the available processors and will ensure that all the system's memory is available to the rendering process. Use the One Per CPU value to have Smedge start a worker for every available CPU or core in the machine. The machine's memory will be shared by all of these processes. This can be more efficient if a render does not use a lot of memory or does not use multiple processors well. You can also set a custom number of CPUs or cores to make available to each worker. If you specify two here and the engine has four total cores available, Smedge will only start two workers on the machine. Smedge does not enforce memory limitations, so be sure you have enough memory on your machine to handle the number of workers you want to start. Otherwise, your rendering will be severely slowed down by swap and could fail with memory errors. The packet size attribute allows you to optimize your job's load time. If a scene loads quickly but takes a long time to render, use a low number like 1. This means each worker will load the scene and render a single frame. If the load time is a significant portion of your render time, increase this value. If you have a value like 20, each worker will load the scene, then render 20 consecutive frames. This decreases the load time for each frame, but makes the total packet render time longer. If you make the value too large, you may not use all of the machines that could be available to do work on a job. The best number to use depends on what you are rendering and how many machines you have. Many rendering products allow you to control some render settings without opening the file in the authoring application. These settings are available in the Render Overrides tab. Exactly which settings are available depends on the renderer, but they usually include things like the output file name and format, the image pixel dimensions, or render quality. You can add these options by using the GUI interface, or you can manually type command line flags yourself. You can save presets of these options. Create a new preset using the plus button. Now the preset will be available to quickly set up overrides. You can clear the settings on this tab using the X button. Sometimes you want to submit several jobs that are very similar, and Smedge gives you several options for accomplishing this. You can use the Submit Copy button to submit the job to the system, but leave the window open with all the settings filled out ready to submit another. The repeat button gives you access to the last 20 jobs you submitted to quickly get settings from those jobs into the window again. You can also load a job file to get settings from a previously saved job. Pressing copy will open a new submit job window with all the settings copied from the current window. The replace button gives you a simple search and replace functionality for submitting jobs. Search for any text and replace it with something else. Using Replace and Submit Copy can make it quick and easy to submit multiple jobs for separate layers or passes. For many products, Smedge can detect the file names of the images that the renderer is creating. Smedge uses this information to verify that the files are created correctly. Smedge can also integrate with image viewing applications to allow you to view individual frames or rendered sequences and inspect your frames for yourself. The Check File Sequences component can show you the frame files on disk that are expected for a render. You can use this window to quickly find and requeue bad or missing frames by examining the files. If a render produces more than one image sequence, select the sequence you want to examine at the top of the window. You can also requeue frames using the Job History view. Select the frames you want to requeue, then select Requeue Selected Work from the context menu. Things don't always go smoothly when you're trying to render. Smedge uses several tests to look for errors and tries to requeue work that fails. You can see the error messages that Smedge detects in the job history view. Sometimes a renderer will report errors that are unrelated to the success of the actual rendering itself. In these cases, you can disable the error tests Smedge performs to ignore these errors. In the job's advanced info tab, you can ignore certain error strings if you know that the errors reported do not affect your rendering. Or you can disable error detection altogether. You can also ignore the process result code if the renderer finished okay, but the rendering process still reports an error that way.
If your scene had an error, Smedge eventually stops trying to distribute it. To get it going again, select the failed job and use the Reset Job Failure Counts command in the job menu. You can also select your engines and use the Reset Engine Failure Counts command in the engine menu. It may be useful to be notified when your job finishes, perhaps by sending an email. Herald can do this for you. Add a notification in Herald. When the job has finished, have it send an email. Use the Settings button to configure what the email will show and how to send it. You can get information about the job using a simple variable substitution syntax. You can find more information about this syntax in the Administrator Manual, along with a complete list of all the job data you can access for each product. Smedge gives you functionality to control work that is currently running on the system. You can stop and requeue work, or stop work permanently. Requeued work will be distributed to the next available engine, but permanently stopped work will not. It is often useful to view the output from the rendering process to monitor progress or look for errors. You can view all of the output from a work process using the View Process Output command or the toolbar button. A window will open and show you all the output from the rendering process. If there's a whole lot of output, use the View Truncated Output command to open the output window but only receive new messages generated from the renderer. Smedge also tries to save the output to disk, so you can view it even after the render has finished. To access this output, use the View Process Output command available from the Job History Context menu for the worker you want to monitor. Some products make additional work commands available. For example, many products in Smedge allow you to view the rendered frame files. The engine is the component in Smedge that does the actual work. You can see information about your engines in the list of engines, monitor their status, and select engines to configure or control them. To configure engines, select one or more engines in the list and open the Configure Engine dialog box using one of the three commands. The commands all open the same dialog box to one of three available tabs. If you're editing multiple engines at the same time, any changes you make will be propagated to every engine you have selected. The Engine Settings tab shows you the options for making a machine available to the Smedge system for doing work. You can set the number of CPUs to make available and which products can be rendered on the machine. The Product Options tab shows you options for each of the rendering products installed. Some of these are basic operational options like the path to the rendering executable. Others are default values for some of the settings you can configure in the Jobs Advanced Info tab. For example, you can add exceptions to the error detection test that are applied to all jobs here instead of adding the exception to every single job yourself. The Pools tab allows you to configure pools and the ordering of those pools for an engine. An engine will give priority to jobs in higher priority pools. The highest possible priority will be given to work assigned directly to an engine, and the lowest possible priority will be given to work assigned to the whole system. You can quickly enable engines by selecting them in the list and using the Enable Engine command or toolbar button. You can also disable engines this way. If you use the Disable Deferred command, any work that the engine is doing will be allowed to finish normally. If you use the Disable Immediately command, then any work the engine is doing will be stopped immediately and requeued for later processing. There are many more features in Smedge than covered here. To get more information, you can read through the user manual. It's available from the help menu or in the docs folder of the software distribution. You can also get information from the uberware.net website. Check out the frequently asked questions section where many common issues are discussed. There's also an online forum where Smedge users can ask questions and share their experience. You can also contact uberware technical support to get further assistance. See you in Smedge!